Ich habe heute im Hadrab in Englisch, weil manche Leute es sehr gut für den Mord haben. Mein Name ist Mohamed Abdel Talib, ich bin Assistant Professor an der Nahal University. Ich denke, Nahal University braucht nicht mehr eine neue Introduktion in diesem Event. Es ist Hazem Azam und Tariq Khalidun hier, schon heute und die anderen Sprecher auch von der Nahal University. Was ich heute über Nanotechnologie spreche, ist Nanotechnologie. Viele von euch haben gehört über Nanotechnologie. Wer hat gehört über Nanotechnologie? Ich habe gehört über Nanotechnologie. Ich habe gehört über Nanotechnologie. So everybody knows about nanotechnology or have heard about it. Does anybody know really what is it? Can somebody just come up with, a, with an answer? Or how can we use it in engineering? Anyone? بيستخدموها بيكون بيبقى شغل معين على السكيل بتاع النانو يعني مثلا لو كان امبارح في سيشن بتتكلم عن زي مثلا بيبقى ترانزستور بيبقى في 2010 هيبقى فيه حوالي 32000 32 تريليون ترانزستور موجودين في الدايره الواحده مثلا بتاعت البروسيسور فاعتقد ده هيكون ابلكيشن This this is of course is, is an application which is electronics. I'm going to give you some examples in electronics application, uh, but I want you to to open your minds a little bit. As engineers, your work is not just in electronics. Your work is also in civil engineering. Even as electronics, you work in medical application. You work in electrical application, in power grids. So there's a lot of applications that involve engineering and nanotechnology. Just to give you an overview. These are all the different areas where nanotechnology is having an impact. If you look at the slide there, okay, bio-nanotechnology, the drug delivery, tissue engineering, drug discovery, diagnostic systems, imaging agent, implantable devices, like the previous speaker was talking about how to put a sensor inside the body, you have a lot of issues on putting the sensor inside the body. You need to make sure that the sensor will function correctly and will not be rejected by the body. And this is something that you can do with nanotechnology. If we look at nanomaterials, you get aerospace defense applications, cosmetics, printing and packaging, consumer goods, catalysis, catalysis energy, construction, um, and I'm going to talk a lot about construction today, automotive applications. If we look at nanoelectronics, you get quantum computing, data storage application, photonics, single electron devices, displays, solar cells. Now, quantum computing is, is a bit far away from today. It's just really theoretical most of the time at this moment. But it is the way for electronics in the future. If we continue also with looking at nanoelectronics, this is from the previous slide, we can divide this more into looking at sensors and actuators. And you can see that you have pollution control monitoring, medical devices, again, the sensors, consumer electronics, cars. And if you look at instrumentation and meteorology, you get critical dimension measurements, sickness measurements, quality control and chemical analysis. So very obvious there's a lot of applications of nanotechnology. There is not a single field starting from textiles ending up with aerospace and defense application that are not bound to have applications using nanotechnology. Now the next movie is actually an old movie that I'm going to display to you. This is a movie that was um, created by NASA. It's a concept airplane. And I will explain after we look at it, what is it that they're really doing. So this is again, this is a 2003 uh, movie from NASA. And one of the main issues that we're trying to do is to mimic for airplanes how this birds, how the eagle or the, or the uh, uh, how most birds fly, this movement of the wing is the most efficient way to fly, to actually have an airplane. So one of the things that we want to do is to be able to actually take care that these are not two separate parts. This is the same wing, splitting and morphing. We're not adding mechanical parts, we're using the same wing to morph and to change its shape. And here even the wing is going to move up. These are not mechanical hinges. This is actually the wing moving forward, splitting to allow better maneuverability and even to bend. What we're going to see here is laying down a network of piezo ceramic material. These are materials that if you apply voltage across them, they change the dimensions. 
and building a network of this, we can really modify the shape of the wing to let it land in this way, which is more efficient, and to give it a lot more maneuverability. Another application that we can see of nanotechnology is stretchable electronics. And this is actually a very simple idea, and this is something I want you to pay attention. Nanotechnology is not just about inventing new materials. It is actually about using old materials in new ways. This idea is very simple. A kid in kindergarten could have come up with this. Basically what they do, they build the silicon um, structure as normally done by lithography. Then they have a ribbon, uh, a sheet of polymers, plastics. They stretch it to a certain limit. They lay it down on the structure they have created using lithography. And then they peel it off and let it relax again. As it relaxes, it actually folds like this. Now what has been found is that when it's folded, the silicon structure built on top of it did not break. Its characteristics did not change. Now, the polymer used here, this is a polymer device by nanotechnology. Now using this technology, you can build a complete waiver and you can flex it as much as you want. Now this has a lot of applications and a lot of things that technology and electronic industry has been looking for. A second application is in batteries. Now, this is from Nature Nanotechnology and what you're seeing, these are actually uh, silicon nanotubes. So nanotubes build out silicon. What they have done here in this technology is that they have loaded, allowed the silicon nanotubes to absorb lithium ions on top of it, lithium atoms on top of it. And these two images are taken exactly at the same dimension, the same magnification. And what you can see is that the lithium has actually um, absorbed on the silicon um, nanotubes. What did, this, what did this do? This allowed a 10 time increase in battery recharge capacity. So simply by using the existing materials, silicon and lithium, we already know this, but by nano-engineering of it, we were able to actually enhance the properties of what we have. Now I'm going to look at a different application. These are actually real life applications in the market by automotive industry. So you got here Toyota using nanoplay enforced polymers for the builds that you wear in your seats. Um, lightweight structure composites. General Motors using nano enforced polymer for structure application. And these are the cars that actually have this technology. Daimler Chrysler, which is Mercedes, or was Mercedes in 2004, they used scratch-resistant nanoparticle clear coats for painting on the car. And these are already cars here in Egypt available. Nissan, the, for, the front uh, fender, has actually carbon nanotubes in it. And this is, makes it a lot more stronger and impact resistant. Volkswagen also. So as you can see, there is a lot of applications. Now, I hope I have motivated you enough to realize that nanotechnology exists today in the market. And I'm going to move in a little bit to describe who we are and what we do. I come from two institutions. I come from Nile University and I'm also involved with Subway Corp, which is a scientific consultancy firm here in Egypt. So this is the profile of Subway Corp. We are strategic advisors in nanotechnology. We look at different technology applications, specifically nano and deliver reports and deliver roadmaps. We have a global network of key players at startups and corporations and universities and in government. We have extensive experience in research project coordination, management of research projects, and nano lab initiation. Um, and we organize a number of meetings and conferences to, uh, to inform the public about nanotechnology. What do we do we specifically? We work in consultancy with the government and with uh, different corporations. We work in IP control and management and marketing of intellectual property. And we have outreach programs where we um, try to approach the society and inform them about what is the benefits and the harms of that technology. The second profile I would like you to know is that of Nile University related to nanotechnology. The program that we're starting in nanotechnology is a very young program. What we have is a master's program, which is a two-year master of science. Um, it's going to focus on fabrication, characterization, theory and modeling, intellectual property rights, ethics and industrial applications of nanotechnology for the Egyptian market. And this is a program that is going to